and I can spend much more time with the live demos, which is, as you know, not advised at all uh, during a presentation. And uh, anyway, I will try. So the content of uh, our presentation uh, would be uh, quite simple because I would like to present to you uh, the content uh, of uh, the data sets that we are offering to you. Uh, so it means that we have real data to be used, covering some of them whole Europe, some of them even more uh, than whole Europe. Uh, how, to, how we integrated them uh, in the concepts uh, that were presented by Raoul, and also about the business model and some ongoing work. But starting from the motivations, I assume that you have uh, sometimes uh, been faced to, to a situation like this. Uh, so first of all, uh, if you have a data, they typically cover the urban areas and not the rural areas. That's one point. The second point, if you find your data, it is a mantra that is being repeated in several books, articles, etc. Uh, that 80% of all costs for any geospatial based system uh, are the cost for um, providing the data and buying the data. And the logical question is, we have so many uh, European projects, so many great European projects, uh, where data are being produced, and why not to re reuse such data? And that was the reason why we, together with Karl Krava, have founded the Plan for All Association, saying, okay, we have an infra infrastructure, we can guarantee that your data won't be wasted after uh, the end of the project and the sustainability period. Uh, and so on, if, if you are interested, please come to Plan for All Association and you can uh, upload your data as you want. And not to be an exception, we have published uh, data from our five previous projects, which are the examples that I will show in the, few, uh, in the following slides. So you have already heard about the data bio, and uh, I will add some more projects because uh, there was one called Open Transport Net, uh, which did a derivation uh, of the OpenStreetMap as in a routable version. Perhaps you know that the OSM is already in a routable version, uh, but it's not really so straightforward as it could be. And the aim of this project was to provide really routable uh, data set. Uh, we cooperated uh, because I participated in the Open Transport Net as well as in the Foodie project. Uh, so that's a product called Open Transport Map. That's one point. Uh, and we're listening to that. The SDI for apps, uh, which were presented here already, uh, produced two major data sets. The first one is Open Land Use, uh, providing the classification on the level of parcels uh, of the Open Land Use in Europe. And the second one is a worldwide one. It's called the Smart Points of Interest. By the way, 27 million of points of interest on an open basis. And this is all that we are reusing in the Data Bio project, which you have heard already about, and you know uh, all the details that are needed from the project management point of view. So I'll very shortly introduce uh, each data set. The open land use, so far, 45 million objects. Uh, so completely land use, for instance, for Austria, for the Czech Republic, for Latvia, and, and several other countries, as I've mentioned, mainly the European one. We are also reusing the data models that were provided by Inspire, and we are extending them for specific uh, uh, applications. And uh, we are following uh, regarding the metadata, regarding uh, identifiers, uh, management, and other things like that, the principles of Inspire, to not to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so here you can see the main website of the Open Land Use uh, project. And in an, an example, uh, what is the result? What is something that you can really download uh, as a data? including the attributes uh, that are available. This is the example for the Czech Republic. And if you are interested in that, one possibility could be this one, this link. But I would like to advise you to also wait, because there will be a link uh, 
for all integrated databases together. So that's one possibility. If you are interested in non-link data approach, uh, it is available also and well-known uh, shapefile, that's the format from the 1990s, uh, is there and you can download your data, but you have also the Sparkle endpoint and the RDF. So this is the example uh, and the coding which uh, you already know. And I will go to the second database out of three that I would like to present to you today. Uh, the second one is called the Open Transport Map. And the Open Transport Map is uh, a seamless database derived mainly from the OpenStreetMap, mm -hmm. but also updated with other uh, open databases that were available. Uh, and in fact, it's also originating from Inspire. Uh, it is originating from the transport networks, uh, spatial data theme, and the uh, road transport networks uh, data model itself. And it is being enhanced also for some live data, like for instance the traffic information, there are some business, uh, uh, business contracts on top of this data set, like monitoring the transport in Pilsen uh, or car accidents in Birmingham in, in the UK. And again, also in this case, you can download the data, as you can see, uh, you can go through the different NUTS level and to download it uh, uh, for a specific uh, NUTS region. But you can use it also as a service, in this case, not only as a RDF and the Sparkle endpoint, but also as a web service according to the OGC uh, implementation specification called WFS, so it means the real uh, vector data with all the attributes. So you can also join uh, this data set in that way. The open transport map is in fact very simple from the data modeling point of view uh, because uh, it's, it's a graph data. We have nodes, uh, we have the, the edges, uh, and plus there are some other attributes that are available. And the third database, before introducing you the integration, is the smart points of interest. And the smart points of interest, as I mentioned, is the one uh, that covers also Southeast Asia and Africa because we have found uh, sources for that. Uh, by the way, for instance, in Africa, the, the most popular country is uh, Cameroon. Uh, that, that, is, uh, that has really so detailed data, for instance, uh, as uh, uh, Western Europe. And those 27 million objects, and still being updated, uh, are also available in several forms. So first of all, there is available the ontology itself and the Sparkle endpoint. Uh, on the contrary to the predecessors I have presented, you cannot download the data itself uh, in a shapefile or something like that, but you can download it uh, in a linked open data way. <coughs> so let's move to the core of the presentation, uh, and this is the integration and the live demos. So as you have seen also from Raoul's presentation, uh, we must have like transformed the data into RDF, which was the hardest part, uh, in fact, uh, because we have to map it, we have to uh, manually adapt it. Uh, then we populated uh, the data sets uh, in Virtuoso. Uh, then linked together those data sets, uh, built some queries, and uh, provided the visualization. So we, we made uh, the whole chain of all steps uh, as well presented for all three data sets. The software was already commented, so I can completely skip it, and I will go to some even more factical and even more live uh, uh, information. So here you can see the so-called foodie endpoints because it's being operated in the uh, foodie cloud, uh, which is being operated by the PSNC uh, in, in Poznan. Uh, and here you see the, the endpoints and the number of triples, uh, where you see that it's uh, really uh, quite large numbers. It's, we, are, we are going about the millions, 700 millions uh, of triples uh, that are published, that are really available to you. But anyway, what could be better than show it uh, in a live demo? So, the Spark 1 toy, this link was provided also 
within rounds. Okay, so we have different screens. So I will try to share the screen. Yeah. So now you now you see it. No, you don't. So perhaps I will make. I hope that it will. Uh, I will try to duplicate. Yeah, works. Okay. So, for instance, this is the, the Sparkle query. Um, <coughs> I would like to use one hint uh, because to write it down <laughs> from my mind would take some time. But to see, as you can see, it's very, very fast for 700 million triples. So this is something that we are uh, really very satisfied with. Uh, the linked open data approach is really faster than the OGC services that, that are the traditional one approach uh, to geodata. And at least to me, as a, as a geoinformatician, uh, this is a perfect conclusion. Uh, and th this would be something that I would be completely satisfied with. Uh, yeah, so going to the presentation itself. We have the Fossative uh, search browser. So in the case that you are not familiar with or from any reason you don't want to play with the Sparkle, uh, you can have uh, some more user-friendly approach. So another live demo. Yeah, and for instance, I, s I see the flowers. So I would like to search for a flower. But I like really my wife so much that I don't want to buy a flower. I would like to buy a flower farm to her. <laughs> so let's see, as you can see really, really very quickly. Uh, so for instance, let's see one flower farm in Vietnam. As I said, it's Southeast Asia is also supported. And here you see on the, oh, I can make it bigger. You can see that some flower farm is a tourist attraction uh, in, in Vietnam. You see the coordinates uh, where it has been uh, created, but it comes, it originates uh, from the smart points of interest and, and so on. Uh, so here is everything you could obtain from the smart points of interest. Then the map visualization. I don't want to show, and honestly, the reason is quite simple. Today is the Czech national holiday, by the way, uh, 99 years from establishment of the Czechoslovak Republic. And uh, it's not working, the map server is not working right now due to the maintenance that we ran uh, over the national holiday. So sorry for that. Uh, but after the national holiday, it will work, so you can use the links. But anyway, these are the examples of uh, user-friendly approach, uh, also from the visualization uh, part. And going to the business model, uh, I have to continue what I have said at the beginning. Uh, we have already been paid from the European projects, so the financial part is already solved. For the reason, the data are available to you, the tools are available to you free of charge, uh, of course, the, the, the licensing uh, limitation, the licensing limitations respect uh, the input sources. So, in case what is uh, the OpenStreetMap, for instance, you can use it even for commercial purposes. If you enhance the database, uh, please uh, make sure that uh, your amendment is also available. That, that's it, but no money really. So, but on the other hand, also the infrastructure costs you something. And so for that reason, uh, further analysis, consultation services, and uh, stuff like that are the subject of payment. So uh, this is how the money comes into Plan for All Association, how the money comes uh, also <coughs> to, to uh, operating all the systems and everything that is needed. Plus, luckily, we have for the following four years uh, assured financing from ongoing European projects. So at least for the following uh, four years, uh, all 700 million uh, triples that, that I have shown you uh, will be available. And 
just to show you, because I'm also a cartographer and I teach cartography at university, uh, I would like to also show you one, one demo that could be based on top of link data, on the top of uh, 4D data model in, in itself. Uh, and it's, it's some cartographical tool for some very basic uh, analysis. It has uh, different modules uh, that you can use. So for instance, you would be interested in Tuesdays and you would like to see what uh, was your tractor doing. In fact, you see that there were two tractors, two monitoring units, if you see the uh, red spots. You will see that somewhere about 5.30 uh, they went to a pump station which is located on the, uh, on the right side from, from your perspective uh, in this uh, farm and then they went and for instance how the operations were performed uh, these are originating from the measurements of each two seconds each two seconds you have the position, you have the fuel consumption, uh, the uh, information about the motors, for instance the RPM, uh, or also about the application machine, for instance a sewer or, or anything you need. And anything you can also obtain from the ISO bus, because this is a separate chapter. But anyway, you can, you can play with this. And if I will go back to, to the presentation, uh, one farm that we have as a testing farm has eight kinds of tractors. Here you see the case, you see Steyr, uh, there's also uh, Zetor uh, and, and several others. And we can obtain really a different a kind of information from uh, each of those. But anyway, if you have 20 tractors, uh, sorry, 23 in fact, factor, uh, tractors and application machines, it gives you for, for 1,000 hectare farm 10 megabytes of data a day and try to multiply it by a number of farms, uh, try to multiply it uh, by um, different uh, number of uh, application machines and you can easily come to big data. Uh, so this is something that uh, is a part of the data bio project, exactly how to support the geospatial and other techniques and also non-geospatial and how to, how to also integrate the geospatial domain into mainstream IT and not to claim that spatial is something special. Mm -hmm. So for instance, here is a map that, that you can see from the fuel consumption, uh, which shows you first of all elevation, secondly also granularity of soils, uh, and there are several analyses that we are running on top of that. So that was all from the introduction of those databases and the business logic that is available. And I would like to thank you for your interest in the data bio project and uh, publication of those data sets. And uh, I'm open to your questions.